Hi, I want to tell you a little bit about our new uh, CGEM, our main programme at Rising Crane. One of the things you'll notice is different is that we're no longer separating into stand-up and ground classes. And as usual, we don't separate our mixed martial art into separate other combat sports. And there's very specific and very good reasons for that. A lot of people feel that making a transition to MMA is quite intimidating because people think, oh, they've seen UFC and it's very brutal and it's very hard. There's no reason that MMA has to be any more intense or any harder than any other martial art, be it grappling, be it striking. Everything we do can be graduated. You can practice at low intensity, you can practice at high intensity. We have separate classes for competitive athletes, people that want to fight in the cage, and we have our regular classes where we're working on skills. Sparring is a game of timing and distance. So here's an example of some light stand-up sparring. All fights begin standing up in MMA. So therefore, there's no point just learning, just learning ground fighting, because you're gonna to have to learn to take it to the ground without taking punishment. Okay, thanks guys. So here's an example that we're just playing and keeping it really light. In order to get to the clinch, if you're learning a, a wrestling-based system, you're probably going to start like this with your chin sticking out, which isn't a really good habit to get into in MMA because he's got that and because he's got knees as well. Boom! So, um, I need to find out a way of wrestling, but still from my MMA start. So that's the first skill that you have to learn. The second idea is if I'm, I'm doing a purely striking-based art, I can get away with standing like this, and then if he decides to shoot, I'm going to be very difficult for me to defend myself. So I need to be able to defend I need to be able to both strike, defend strikes and scroll from the same stance, I need to be able to fight out of that stance. So that's one of the reasons why we don't separate. If we separate into boxing only, I can get used to the idea that this leg can stay here without any uh, problems, where in reality he can kick or take down from there, or he can shoot in on the leg, and I'm in trouble. So I have to make all of my striking fit the system of MMA. Siege MMA is a system. It's an integrated system. Striking, clinching, striking on the ground, striking on the feet, working against the cage, fighting off your back, fighting off the top, all integrated. Now a lot of people, when I've said that, have said, oh that's way too complicated. You can't do that as a beginner, there's too much to learn. Actually that's not the case. We can take very few techniques. The only important difference is that they're integrated from the beginning. So for example, if I can ask Max to come in. So Max is um, amateur MMA champion. Okay, he's only ever trained an integrated style, so everything he's done has been integrated from day one. So, example, we can mainly do a couple of very light striking, for example, straight punches and low kicks, and one person has to try to figure out how to get a takedown from that. So, for example, Max is going to be coming in striking, when he's defending, we're doing very low intensity, we're not going hard at all. So, when he shoots in for his takedown, say so Lee's going to shoot in, he's got to figure out how to do that in such a way as he's not taking a, not taking a punish. Great, thank you. Ground classes. Stars that separate ground tend to have no striking. Where in real fighting, MMA or self-defense, person on top is almost certainly going to be striking. Now a lot of people think that's really scary. Well it is scary. If someone on top of me punching me. That sucks. I want to go and just learn a style with no striking. That's avoiding the problem. That's not learning to deal with the problem. How do we learn to deal with the problem? We train with friends. We train with people we trust. So here's an example. If Lee's on the bottom and Max is on the top, Max is going to be striking. Now, here's the difference. Max can use full resistance. That means he's really trying not to be thrown off and not to be caught. But you can go full resistance while doing very light intensity. In other words, he's striking very light, at least having to deal with it, looking for the escapes, and so on, and working his techniques from within this framework. So now he's escaped, and so on. He's still defending punches, you see? And he can get to his feet safely and tactically. So there's an example of an integrated approach, very low intensity, anyone can do it, the more you practice, the better you get. As opposed to an example where, if Lee's on the bottom, Max is not allowed to strike, Max is doing gra pure grappling, Lee spends a lot of time training that, gets very, very good at that, but never learns what to do if the person's punching or when the game changes, suddenly Max postures up, oh, this is a whole different, whole different game. So please understand, different game, different system, does not necessarily mean harder. If you come to our classes, you will not get hit hard, you will not get hurt. Of course, people training for competition have to do hard sparring, but that won't come until after you develop the skills. So here's another point. In the individual combat sports, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, which of those combat sports teaches you to fight with your back against the cage? Which of them teaches you to take someone down using the wall? Answer, none of them. Which of them teaches you to take down someone that's trying to punch you? Answer, none of them. MMA is a distinct, separate martial art. It needs to be trained as such. By all means, train with uh, specialists, train with someone that's really good at armbars, really good at takedowns, really good at kicks, sharpen up your defences, that's awesome. But if you want to make your 
techniques work in a cage or in a self-defense environment, we need to be able to mix it. So another example would be in our, in our school, we rotate the curriculum. So you'll have stand-up, you'll have clinch, you'll have ground, pad work, fitness training, working on the wall, working off your back, working on the top. Here's an example of some wall sparring. It can be again very light. Let's say Lee's uh, facing the wall, Max is back to the wall. So we can start from this position. So we're free for going for takedowns, he's free for going for strikes, how to set it up, how to use the wall, how to tactically maneuver, go for a single leg, so on. Max is trying to defend, Max is trying to show his feet. Again, building very good skills, and crucially, creating the right habits for MMA. So he's not learning one kind of a takedown, and then in an MMA fight, he has to change the way he fights. So that's a little introduction. That's why I don't separate the classes into stand up and ground, because every fight starts standing up, and many of them end up on the ground. You need to know both. Whoever controls the clinch gets to decide whether it's standing or not, which means you need to have good clinch skills. That it's not the same thing as learning Olympic wrestling. I'm talking about MMA specific clinch skills. That's what we train, that's how we train. We have classes every night. We have classes every lunch hour. We have classes Saturdays. So you can come several times a week. We also have strength and conditioning and our all important fighting fit class where you can practice your technique full speed and full power. The only difference, you're doing them on bags, not on your partner's face. So that's our, our mission. Train intelligently, don't get hurt, learn real skills, and be healthy. So, hope to see you all in class. Thank you.